and we've reached arena season early. I think everybody knows by now that the parcel of land that the Coyotes are pursuing is going to be discussed at the Arizona State Land Department's, what's the committee called again? Appeals Board. Yeah, it raises some confusion. Were you so excited to get into government when you became a sports reporter? Yes, exactly, exactly. It's going to be, it's on their agenda for tomorrow. Tomorrow. That doesn't mean it's going to be posted for public auction immediately. I've I've heard and who knows, this could change. It could take a week for it to be publicly posted, but it's, it's expected to be publicly posted. It's the coyote, so I know you're all waiting. Are you sure about that, Craig? <laughs> no, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about anything with the coyotes, but that that is the expectation that will be posted for public auction. And then you've probably read the Arizona Republic had a, uh, an article um, where the appraisal came in at $68.5 million for the land. We know that the minimum time that has to be publicly posted is 10 weeks. Could be even longer than that. We could see a, an auction like in mid-June, for instance. But there's a lot of stuff that's coming down on the arena within the next couple of weeks, and we'll have coverage of it, of course. As you said in your newsletter, the Coyotes offseason is arena season. Well, arena season has come early, Mm -hmm. um, and it all starts tomorrow, um, Thursday, with that that land auction meeting. So, Craig, what else can we expect with this? (sighs) (laughs) Actually, the sound of the arena talk should just be a deep sigh. The unexpected. (laughs) That's that's what we should expect. So are there more people bidding? Or is it just the oats? We don't know, but one of our diehards did some research through public records and found that only 22% of these land auctions that have occurred since 2017, there have been over 100 of them, had a second bidder. And this this backs what I've been telling you guys. Only 22%? Only 22%. And what local politicians have been telling me, normally, in the vast majority of these cases, when this land gets posted for auction, there's only a single bidder. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. You have that coyote's cloud in the back of your mind yeah. saying this will oh, be in the 22 percent. You just don't know. But if that happens, if there is a second bidder, Alex is going to have to win it. He's going to have to win the bid. This is all on Alex Morello. Nobody else now win the bid. And people have asked me, well, if there's no other bidders, can they pay, pay less for it? Can they bid less? No. The, the, the appraisal price is the minimum price that you have to pay. So there's no getting around that. What else? What is the timeline then? If for the posting and, and when this auction could happen, it, maybe mid June is what I'm hearing. It could be as soon as ten weeks. But I'm still it could, stuck on that. It number, could be Craig. pushed out. Yeah, that twenty two percent. You're you're saying that that my math. I, I went to North Dakota, so it's not <laughs> known for their math. But that's seventy eight percent of these auctions were one bidder. Then, yep, which is more than fifty percent. Yes, it is. Yeah, but I know that. Math. It's more than sixty percent too. It's more than so, three quarters. So wow. I, all I hear on the street is, well, what about this secret microchip company? Or from, what about a distribution from, center? Or from, what about, I'm like, From what? all the uh, trained reporters out yeah, there? All the trained the, reporters. Yeah, Well, yeah. I heard it's yeah. going to be this. So, like, buddy, <laughs> cool your jets a little bit. Yeah. So having said all of these things. Yes. What the hell is the NHL thinking? That's the million-dollar question. It's the $68.5 million question. <laughs> That's good, Leah. This is, this, is, this is where I come at all of this. What I've been told is this is a three-year construction timeline, right? So you know what that means. That means three more years at Mullet Arena. The Coyotes originally signed for how many years? Three years plus a one-year option. option. That was the deal. Now, listen, I've talked to Morgan Olson at ASU, and they're not kicking the Coyotes out. They're they're happy with the arrangement. They're obviously profiting from the arrangement. The, the ASU is not going to make the Coyotes homeless. Mullet will be there if they need it to bridge the gap. The question is, how does the league sign off on three? Maybe I hear three and I think, okay, so that's the best case scenario. What happens if there are delays? What happens if there are lawsuits? Who knows what they find? Maybe they find artifacts on the land for yet. Yeah, Why would, be, would you put that in the universe? That would be so coyotes, right? Like it, people, people have asked about an archaeological study, which well, I you have to do with the land. about animals. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> you have to do all that stuff. So could there be delays? Of course there could be delays. Could it be four more years at Mullet? How does the league sign off on that? And what does the PA have to say about that? Is the PA more satisfied because, okay, there's some finality, or are they still saying, you're going to make NHL players play at Mullet Arena for four more seasons or three more seasons, even if it's the best case scenario? That's my biggest question. That's the one that I, I keep coming back to. 
Really? Are they really going to say that? Now, flip side, as we saw with those Richard Rodier tweets, does the league have any grounds to force mm -hmm. a sale? Do they have something that allows them to do it? And if not, do they not want to push this because they fear a legal battle with Alex Morello? Well, and here's, again, I'm going to preface my comments with, so if this gets out into the Twitterverse, I am not a reporter. I haven't talked to anybody. This is not reporting. This is my opinion. This is an opinion. So like most of what we see on Twitter. Right. <laughs> okay. But if it appears to be that this is going to go to auction by June, and it appears to be that Alex Morello is going to be one of maybe one or one of two or one of three bidders, but he's going to be a bidder on this land in North Phoenix. If the NHL was concerned and thinking about moving this franchise now, would they allow a current owner to spend upwards of 70 to $100 million buying land and then going after he purchased that 70 to $100 million in land on, for a team he currently owns yep. and turn around and say, oh, by the way, we're moving your team to Salt Lake City? I, I, I just, I, I can't have a hard time grasping that Alex Morello too. would go, whoa, I, I just spent $100 million, $75, $70 million on this land and moving the team? I'll see you in court. Yeah. Because I, I just, I don't think if the league wanted to move the team, they'd say, Alex, you know what? Why don't you hold off on this auction? Yeah. Why don't you not go to the auction? Why don't you not spend your money and we'll figure things out? I, I don't think there's any possible way that they would allow a current owner of a current team to spend 70 to $100 million buying land and then move the team. I just don't see it. Yeah, that's a hell of a precedent to set, right? Yeah. Yeah, we pulled this end around on you as an owner, yep. even though you were moving forward with this process that could produce a final result. Right. Yeah, I have a hard time with that, too. I have a hard time believing that the league would say, yeah, okay, unless unless Alex wants the land anyway and could develop it for sure. something else. I, I, I don't want to close off that sure. possibility, but, yeah, it, it, it seems very unlikely that the league would allow him to go forward with this without saying, hey, right. Sorry, it's not happening. And, and we all agree here that if if this land does not, if he does not win the land auction and, and there is no immediate plan B, I mean, like the next morning, I, I bought the land by Craig's house and we're going to put a, an arena there. If that doesn't happen please, the next morning, please do that. If they, yeah, I know. If it doesn't happen the next morning, all bets are off. Everything we've talked about, and people say, oh, they might move. Yeah, they might. They might move. If he doesn't win that auction and there's no immediate plan B, does not surprise me one iota if this team plays somewhere else next season. Not at all. But I think you have to let this process bear out. And all we're hearing now is there's the auction in June. And if he wins the auction, I, I just I don't see there's any way that this team moves. So how do you get past the three to four years at Mullet Arena? Yeah, I don't know. The PA is not going to be happy I don't with know. that. Some players are not yeah, going to be and happy with that. They're not. I keep hearing. I've seen Glendale and do a bridge deal in Glendale. I've seen that on Twitter. I've had people DM me on that. Are they going to Glendale, Craig? I don't think so. That's the, listen, I'm going to have a story on all this soon. Yes. I'm going to touch on all these angles, but it's the same if you're thinking, you like I've heard people Craig. say, oh, they could play even like a hybrid season between Mullet and, and Glendale, like the Islanders did yeah. with Nassau and, yep. and uh, Barclays. I don't think that's happening. And I also think that all you have to do is go back and watch our show from three seasons ago when we were talking about the Coliseum, when we were talking about um, the Footprint Center, we were talking about other options. There just aren't any. Yeah, There it's, aren't. It's mullet or... It's mullet, mullet or, or move. Mullet or move. That's it.